Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this webinar. My name is Jean Therium, Manager of Global Campaigns for Equipment and Instruments at Avantor, and I will be your host for today's lecture. In this webinar, you will learn how the Spectrolink workflow eliminates the need for complex, outdated and often platform dependent software, saving valuable time and thousands of euro on new equipment. You can achieve greater efficiency and accuracy in your experiments while increasing your instrument's lifetime. We'll provide a comprehensive overview of Spectrolink showcasing its benefits and in addition demonstrating the latest advancements in digital spectral processing and novel quantification methods. During this session, you will receive valuable information about Spectrolink from an expert in, the field, uh, in this field. Our speaker, Emil Oljunt Nielsen, CEO of CPH Nanosystems. Emil brings his knowledge and expertise to a discussion of the development of this methodology and how it can be implemented in your quality laboratory. Vian becker shaker will be moderating this webinar and she will handle any questions. But before we begin, I would like to inform you that this session will be recorded and sent to you after the webinar. You can also find all of our past and upcoming webinars on our website under the events section. We will be answering your questions at the end of the session, so please submit them at any time using the question function. We would also appreciate your feedback on this webinar, so please fill out the survey at the end of the session too. Thank you very much. And now let's begin the training. Emil, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. It's about Spectrolink. Um, it's about streamlining your workflow in your laboratory uh, and in the process save valuable time and thousands of euros of, on new equipment. So first I have a, a, a bit of an outline here. We'll start with an introduction to the concept of what is next generation UV spectroscopy. What are some of the problems that you might face in your lab? and what are the solutions that we together with Avanza BWR provides for these kind of problems. A little bit about the savings, the relevance, the versatility of what the solution provides for you. Some examples of customers, both from industry and academia. Um, I'll do a very quick, um, very quick hands-on demo, giving you a few examples throughout, but at the end I'll, I'll, I'll do a bit more. And then finally, at the end, I'm gonna conclude with how this is actually applicable to your laboratory, to your daily work. First, a little bit about the company that I represent today, CPH Nano. Um, it's a Danish lab tech company. We work with upgrading UVB spectroscopy across multiple brands to be at the forefront of Industry 4.0. And we do this in a quite an untraditional way. We don't do instruments ourselves. We collaborate with, with um, aggregators like VWR Venter. And we do this by selling consumables, digital upgrades, add-ons to the existing instruments, and thereby making it possible to get an integrated seamless digital experience and new functionality to existing infrastructure. Today, we have customers in the food and beverage segment, uh, in the materials manufacturing process segment, especially in Germany. Um, we have a few customers within water treatment and laboratory analysis um, and environment. So just to, just to give you an idea about that spectroscopy is widely used technique and next generation UV spectroscopy really uh, is applicable to a, a multitude of different industries. So why should you choose us uh, from a customer perspective and upgrade your own spectrophotometer? Well, first of all, we support your hardware. Um, I'll show you in a moment, but I'm standing here together with, with a very nice instrumentation over here from BWR. I'll show you how that works today. Then some of the stuff we have done and are continuing to do is all about you as a user. So um, it's designed for humans. We really, really care about how to make this easy in a laboratory. I was visiting a customer um, here in Copenhagen uh, just, just uh, Friday, and I can tell you uh, with the amount of thermal printers uh, for every you know, two meters in the lab, there's really a lot to gain by not just doing the measurement, 
but also look at how do we get the results reported at the end of the day so we can we can create that value that is the reason why we are there in the first place then our solution really is is interesting because it creates quite accurate and instant results um and on many occasions um we've shown that that some of the stuff we can do because the platform is so well established we can just build on that and therefore we can often exceed a dedicated instrumentation and the precision you can get in that and then finally everything we do is has a unique traceability both on each of these spectral links we're talking about today it has a code on them they are completely traceable back to the raw raw components and, and also on our other consumable we have um we have very very interesting and high um strict controls on the production and it's, and it's all done made in denmark um here just north of copenhagen so you can rely on this very unique traceability that will really upgrade your lab so in a, in essence this is a superior technology there's very little upfront cost and training for any laboratory so if you look at our system um we have the cuvettes that's consumables that fit into an existing spectral photometer and then we have spectral link and spectral link is is really what, what this webinar is about of course but it's it's a digital bridge between doing the measurement inside the cuvette getting the data out of the spectral photometer and then processing afterwards so it's, it's really all about making it super easy to get a lot of work done in the laboratory and save hours doing it now, of course, under this, there is a bit more. Um, we support the many different flows, um, all the way from a sample through kits, preparation. We have different cuvettes, particle sizing, uh, refractometry, micro volume through the spectral photometer that you can see here from BWR. Then you can use a spectral link or a browser to upload spectral works, and from there, you can transfer data to an ELM uh, laboratory information management system or Python analysis um, using our system with CoLab which really gives you a very customizable solution, which I like to talk about at the end of the webinar. And finally, you get your PDFs, your, your graphs, your results out of your learning. This is, this is a really, really interesting workflow because everything from the first step of having a sample all the way to we have the final graph has been thought through and really saving you a lot of time and a lot of hassle. But today it is about spectraling, so we will focus on this part of, of the journey. And it's important to say that Spectral Link works with different instruments and it works with different kind of consumables, not just our own consumables. So what is the problem here? Well, first part of the problem is limited usage. Um, today's Spectral Photometers, as the one I'm standing next to here, can in practice only be used for single wavelength absorbance or optical density measurements, so-called OD measurements, Atenians measurements. And that, that kind of limits the spectral photometer. And actually, if you think about it in a historical perspective, the spectral photometer, the fundamentals of that instrument, was basically settled in the 40s and the 50s. It hasn't really changed that much. I am aware that diode array instrumentation came on later on, but fundamentally, we're doing the same thing as we did uh, out of this the, the, the Second World War. Um, so it has it's still a limited use. And this, of course, means that labs need to needs to buy other instruments to get their measurements done. Then today, there's a lot of time wasted on reporting results. Data handling, analysis, and sharing is quite cumbersome. And what that means, at the end of the day, in practice, in the lab, results are often just printed out manually on a thermal printer. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I, I visited myself, a customer, um, last Friday, and they had uh, quite a quite big lab and for every 1.5 meters of this lab there was a thermal printer thermal printers for the instruments thermal printers for the scales thermal printers for the ph meters and once you have that it means that you then need to take your little print and then you need to do something with it before it becomes digital before it becomes something you can submit or work with thermal so there's a lot of time wasted on just getting results in and out and handling that in a practical context for a laboratory technician for example and then the last thing is, as I mentioned in the beginning, this limited usage, it really means that all the savings you could have on other instrumentation, you can't really do, right? The potential today, a spectral photometer like this one can do particle size analysis. It can do micro volume measurements like you know from the nanodrop system or, or the MySpec from BWR. And it could do refractometry, as you might have known from the products that you find with Anton Parr, or if, it's, if you are in the US, it would be Rudolf Research. So, so all of these savings, all of the potential of how 
this can actually become a fully workhorse for the laboratory is often not utilized. And this is really some of the things we were looking into finding a solution to and why we came up with Spectraling and has been working on it for the last five years. So here it is, a very small box, a, a fantastic new thing. And I don't think there's anything like it out there. So I'd like to just give you a bit of a, a bit of a look at how it looks. So if we if we look at the box itself, it looks like this. And um, if we look a little bit inside, I'm just going to take it over to our close-up camera over here. You can see what is inside the box. And here, first of all, we have a power power plug. This is basically in 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 Denmark it ships with this one. This is the standard here in in Europe. And um, then on the other side, we have a small cable, a USB to, to USB cable. And then finally, inside the box, there is the Spectralink itself. So the box is, the Spectralink itself is, is on the order of 10 times 10 centimeters. And I should also say there's a small, quick slide down here. So just to get started, there's a little guide on what you do, the four steps you need to go through to get started. If you look at the box itself, it's 10 times 10 centimeters, and you can see a couple of different uh, plugs on it. So there is an Ethernet cable plug and a USB on the side of it, and then there is another USB here, which is for power. And that's basically it. Everything else is, is going on wireless. Then on the back side, you can see that their spectral link is here, and then there is a device code, and, and then there is a C marking and additional information, um, et cetera. So that's, that's what is inside the box. And this then can then be connected to your spectrophotometer. And I, here is a spectrophotometer that I have sitting here, here and, and I have a box connected here. And as you can see, the box is connected in this case with a USB cable that goes from here. And then it's actually attached to the, to the VWI UV 1600 PC instrumentation here. And then on the other end, there is a ethernet cable, looks like this that's connecting it to, to the outside world. And then there is a power cable with USB. So that's all you need. And you can argue if you're using a thermal printer, in, in this case, um, you would have, no matter what you would do, you would need power and you would need a, a, a connection to the instrument. So what we're adding here is the ethernet cable. In this case, we like ethernet. In other cases, you can use Wi-Fi as well. So, so those, are, those, are, those are the things inside the box. So to go back and talk a little bit about what kind of challenge, what kind of solution is it that we're providing here? Um, Spectralink connects the Spectral Photometer to this Spectralworks cloud platform, um, which then allows for this idea that you can take a result, you've just done your spectrum, you've just done your measurement, and you just click one and you have your results generated. Um, and, I, and I haven't seen anybody else in this business being able to provide this kind of very direct user-friendly way of, of working around it. So what that means is you have seamless internet control, data management is, is handled, and analysis is basically one integrated workflow. And this allows you as a customer to upgrade your existing spectrophotometers and thereby perform a range of, of both existing and new tasks and increasing the versatility of, of, of your already purchased instrumentation. So the box is basically about simplifying data management. It's about real-time instrument control. This can be on a computer, this can be on your mobile phone, or it can be on your tablet. Whatever platform you prefer, um, it, will, it will support that. It's about plug and play capability, automated updates. We, I think we give out an update about every quarter. Um, so the, the, it's, it's a little bit like a, you know, modern, um, other kind of modern electronic systems today often comes with over-the-air updates, and, and here you have a similar system. And it really um, is the basis for a lot of cost savings as well. Um, so the features is, is very nice. It streams the data safely to the cloud. There's no need for a thermal printer anymore. Um, a lot of the customers we visit still have the thermal printer as their workhorse in the laboratory. And using this system, this is a fantastic way of upgrading it. It uses standard connections. I mentioned the USB stick, I mentioned the Ethernet, those kind of things, and it fully digitalizes your UVS instrument and workflow. Um, and then comes the very interesting part. So once you digitalize your workflow, there are the immediate, the immediate benefits, which is you can work faster, you can get more done, 
Remember, in the US, there was a study last year showing that about half of the time of laboratory technicians are actually spending on data analysis and reporting. So that's a lot of savings right there. But on top of that, Spectralink can serve as your platform for upgrading your spectrophotometer. And um, we have other products for, for that. For example, we have the NanoQuid S, that's for particle size analysis, basically replacing the DLS, dynamic light scattering, or the um, other kind of scattering um, equipments. Um, and then also um, we have a Cuvet. I might, um, I'll briefly show you, but we also have another platform here with the Cuvet that you can see here, which is one of our consumables. And this consumable, I hope you can see it, and in here there is a little bit of light where you can see there is a protonic crystal, so a protonic chip inside the Cuvet. And this allows this particular piece of consumable to perform uh, refractive index measurements replacing a refractometer and perform micro volume instruments and measurements and thereby this one actually replaces additional on the order of 20,000 euros of equipment um, if you're interested in these in, in in some of our other products you can find our previous webinars on the vwr website or you can go alternative to youtube and search for nanoquid and you will find our previous webinars there um, if you sum up the possibilities now with a standard spectrophotometer with all the add-ons enhancing the digital workflow, you're talking on the order 150,000 euros in instrument savings. And actually, if you wanna replace your instruments and just buy instruments like this with the Spectralink, um, you can get 20 measurements a day for on the order of between 12 and 15 years before you spend the same money as going out and buying expensive equipment. So it's really a game changer in what is the what is the kind of game between capex and opex in a laboratory. So is Spectralink relevant for you? Well, it might be if you're looking for efficient, simplified data management analysis. It might be if you're looking for real-time instrument control, data upload and sharing. And and also if you're looking for something that just updates where you don't need to install something all the time on the computer, then Spectralink is for you. It's it's applicable food and beverages, materials water treatment, lab analysis, et cetera, et cetera. I, I just brought in a few customer examples here for you to give an idea about in practice who will be using this. The first example is a, is a customer where there's different brands of, of spectrophotometer used in the same lab and they were incompatible software. So they were really saving a lot of time by just having one platform. Um, in this case, there were three different brands of instrumentations in the laboratory. And having just the same platform for all of your spectrophotometers is a huge time saver. The example number two is, is an example where the system was used on thermal printers before. And using the Spectralink box, it was now possible to have a completely digital workflow. And example number three um, is an example from a customer where they had a fleet of UAVs instruments and they were spending quite a lot of time. Uh, this is out of a, of a university with quite a large laboratory setup. Um, where they were spending quite a lot of time on maintenance and keeping software up to date on multiple computers. Because today, if you have a spectrophotometer, you often have a computer or thermal printer attached, and it can take quite a bit of time just to get everything working and, and making sure that it stays that way. Um, to go a little bit more in a, in a deep dive, um, here is a, an example, um, a customer story from a university. Um, and um, this is from the Southern University of, of Denmark. And in this particular case, they were running a small, a small laboratory. They had four spectrophotometers in the laboratory from four different vendors. And they were spending quite a lot of time to make sure that um, the students and the researchers and their laboratory technician people were all able to use this equipment that it was kept on kept on um, on maintenance as it should be, and that everything everything was working. And they implemented Spectralink in as a as a whole solution for their laboratory. And um, one of the benefits of this, and um, I think we have a small video that shows this. And if if you are um, interested, you can get the, this video afterwards by by contacting us. Um, but basically, what happened was that once this was implemented. You could start to see students go in and operating the instrumentation with minimum supervision. So, so because students today are used to working or even working but operating a smartphone, 
which is their main way today for, for young people to interact with the world, maybe even. Um, then having a system in the laboratory that mimics the same kind of user friendliness that you see in a smartphone system, allowed these students to just go straight ahead and just use their instrument much more independently than they otherwise could have done. It also meant that changing between instruments became super easy. So previously, you would have to have separate computers. You might have trained one student on one instrumentation, but then you need to change to another one. But with Spectralink, it didn't matter. You could just have the different devices. In one click in the software, you're working on a different instrument. And this is fantastic if you're doing comparison studies, for example, where you want to double check your results on a different instrument. Do I get the same result? Or simply, if you um, have, for various reasons, to have specialized UVB spectrophotometers for one task and then another one for another one. So, so that kind of stuff was, was, was really appreciated. Um, another thing that was really mentioned and, and stood out from this customer was the idea that if you have a system where things are digital instead of being a laboratory journal that is like in paper and it is on, on, the, on, the, on the table, it actually allows you in a safe way to access the data outside the laboratory on the fly. So um, in the period where these measurements were done, the professor, in this case, um, he was traveling and using this system, he was able to keep an eye on what was going on in the lab, even though he was not present in the lab himself at all times. And this can be a, this can be a great time saver and really make sure that things are done as they should, even though um, the person who's kind of checking up on things are not necessarily in the lab themselves. And it, and, it, and it speaks into this huge mega trend right now of working from home, of working uh, remote, of working in different ways that has really completely changed our society since Corona. And the final thing that that, um, that is really a takeaway from this particular story um, is the way that it was possible to generate reports with automated updated results. So what we supply here as well is a system where after your data has come in InspectorWorks, you can generate these reports. But the point is, if you make an extra data point in SpectorWorks, it is you can click once in the report and it automatically updates all the graphs with the extra data point. So instead of having to manually get the data out, put them perhaps in a spreadsheet program or sitting on pen and paper, this system allows you to in just one click update your graphs and you're moving on. And this is quite nice if you're doing research, if you're under time pressure. Or if you're running a QC operation where you really would like the transfer of data to be automatic so that there are no individual errors there. A very nice example. And um, if you want to know more about this customer, please reach out to us or VWR. We'll be happy to provide a, a full video of, of, um, of this customer and, and their experience uh, from working with Spectrally. So some of the key features here. It's a plug and play control, existing spectrophotometers. There's no software installation. Um, most software today for spectrophotometers still come on a CD. So if your computers are starting not to have a CD, it might be a little bit difficult to install. With this system, you don't need to worry about that because you're not installing anything on a computer. It gives you real-time instrument control, data update sharing, and it gives you over-the-air automatic updates included in the purchase of the Spectralink. It's really, really a nice little package. And of course, it creates a lot of value. Spectralink can save time, increase your productivity, simplify your data collection and as just as i mentioned in the example with this customer from southern university it really gives you a lot of chance to, to analyze and sharing your data and then on top it supports this idea that the spectral photometer is now a multi-purpose platform it can do particle size analysis it can do micro volume quantification as you might know from nanodrop or my spec and it can do refractometry as you might know from a refractometer um, and all of those things are built into the Spectralink and thereby it can save you thousands of euros on new equipment and really just make your life a lot easier. All of this ends, um, the data when it comes out ends in Spectralworks. That's, um, that's, that's a cloud platform specifically designed for um, UVB's work. It's online now and it's free to set up a user and I definitely recommend that you, that you try this out. Um, to get to know this tool takes on the order of, if you're used to how a, a, a smartphone works, if you use a smartphone in your daily life, you will find this platform quite compatible with how you would normally do things. And typically time from you into the platform until you have your first results is on the order of five to six minutes. So I definitely recommend checking it out. It's very, very cool. 
Um, finally, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the things that was mentioned as a topic for this webinar. How do we go using SpectraLink beyond um, beyond what is what is done today? And this is this idea that you can automate your data analysis just using one click. And in the CPH Nano system, this comes in um, just after SpectraWork. So in the top right of this slide, you can see we have the spectrophotometer. From the spectrophotometer, you're capable of uploading data to SpectraLink, either using SpectraLink, or you can use a standard browser on your computer or other instrument. And then data goes into SpectraWorks, SpectraWorks it's, it's analyzed there. And then from SpectraWorks, the data can then go out again. And here's a couple of options. So the first is um, traditional systems, and the second one is around Python analysis. And this is where we're using Jupyter Notebook and Colab Notebooks as a product we su supply to customers um, that allow them then to treat the data in their format with their specifications, completely customized to, to, to your needs um, in, in, in just one click. So I'd like to show you how, how that looks. So if you go a step back, and you go, um, you go to, to Spectral Works here. You can actually go to get started in the top, and this will bring you to the UVVS knowledge base. So this is the tool, uh, an online knowledge base built by, by, by our company, and it's the largest and most vast collection of knowledge around UVV spectroscopy. There's a number of different things you can learn in here, and it, it, it's great for, for self-study as well. Um, in, in addition to supporting our, our products. If you go to SpectraWorks, so I'm just going to go out and, and get the front page. If you go to SpectraWorks, then I'm going to go down and click on Colab Jupyter Notebooks. And just to give you an example, here is a, here is a list of different um, notebooks, and, and we keep coming up, um, customers keep coming back to us, new ideas. So, so this is a this is, this is not in any way, uh, um, this is a moving list, it's very dynamic, and, and I would say about every second month or something, there's, there's a new example here. To keep it very basic, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you one example with the standard curve for how do you do standard curve if, you ha if things have to be very easy. So I'm just gonna open that one. And this now brings us to the page where you can see a little bit of data around the, around the, the collab. You can read a little bit about the different data that was used and how things are looking. So I'm just going to click on the notebook itself and put it up in English. Now the, the software moves up and in here I have the possibility now to work in a format which is both text and code in Python. And this allows me to actually create an interactive quality control report or other kind of data reporting. Um, that can automatically update to the data that is bring, that is coming in from the instrument. That's new. Very, very few solutions out there has this capability. So if we go down, we can put, uh, we can put data in, we can see the different graphs um, being updated as we go, and we can calculate, for example, in this case, for a wavelength of 629 nanometers, we can calculate the attenuance as function of concentration, we can have a linear regression on that. This will give us a standard curve, and based on that, we can measure out an unknown sample and get the concentration. And, and such a report like this one is, is available free on our website. And just by updating the data in the top, you can actually have this one loading in new data every day from your quality control in your laboratory, and thereby don't have to copy and paste anything out of other kind of, of software. So it's really a one-stop solution to get very customized work done very, very quickly. If you require additional help how to implement this tool into your, um, into your laboratory, we'll be more than happy to help. Reach out to Aventa, BWR, or to us directly, uh, and we will set up a, a short meeting and see how we can help you save thousands of, of hours in the laboratory. Um, as I mentioned, this is built on top of a programming language and an ecosystem called Python. And today, Python is the largest uh, programming language in the world. 
it's largely in Java and JavaScript. And if you look at particular laboratories, it's, it's one of the most used um, languages in that sector as well. And the point is, not only is Python the largest language in the world, but it's actually the one that grows the most. And what that means is that Python for many, many years will become and is already the industry standard for processing data, for doing data science, for getting data done. And this is why we support it out of the box. Spectralink supports it out of the box. And using our templates, you can basically get started today without any kind of programming experience. Python is fantastic. It's easy, it's simple, it's super efficient. There is a vast, vast community. It's very easy to get help. Um, and um, most, most labs um, today are more or less looking into some kind of implementation. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, Spectralink is a great starting point for actually using a completely automated way of treating all the data that you can generate on, on such a spectrophilometer as this one here. So again, this is implemented using this Jupyter Notebook, the Collapse. Um, no other player in this industry has a facility, has, a, um, has this kind of product available, uh, especially not for free. Um, and but we have it. And if you have any questions, reach out to us or reach out to a vendor part of BWR. So I'd like to give you just an idea about how does how does Spectralink work in, in practice. So if we look out, as I mentioned in the beginning of our presentation, you can see I'm standing in front of an instrument. This is the VWR UV 1600 PC instrumentation. It's a quite nice, quite nice, well-rounded spectrophotometer. Um, it has, if, it, if I open up just a little bit here, you can see that it has four ports for different cubettes, and it has, uh, it's a scanning-based monochromator instrumentation, and it's basically um, a, a version of a spectrophotometer uh, that first was found in, in one of the Beckman instruments um, originally in, in the 40s. It's, it's a very nice, well-rounded instrument. And as I mentioned earlier, this instrument is connected to the Spectralink using a USB port, uh, using the USB port here, that is then connecting to the USB port on the back of the instrument. Then it's using, uh, for today's demo, it's using an Ethernet cable to make sure we have uh, connectivity. You can also use Wi-Fi. And then over here, you can see the power cable here. So again, comparing this to a thermal printer. With a thermal printer, you would still need a connection to the instrumentation and you would still need to power the thermal printer somehow. So in this configuration with an Ethernet cable, we're actually only adding one more cable to digitalize our entire workflow if you compare it to a thermal printer. And on top of that, you're gonna, you're gonna save hours in the lab, just being able to just click once and your data are processed, ready, and can be submitted to, to wherever. Now what I'm gonna do is show you how it works on the digital side of, of things. So I'm going back into um, SpectraWorks here, spectraworks.com. The website looks like this. And now I'm gonna just very, um, very simple click on, on the link up here. That you can see up here, there's a login button. You can find a similar button on the cphnano.com website up here to the right. Um, both of them goes to SpectraWorks, so both of them will get you to, this, to the same, to the same, um, same software. Here I'm just gonna click login. Um, if you have not already set up a profile, um, you have to sign up for a free uh, account down here. When you have signed up, the system will then send you a confirmation email and you have to um, click on a link in that and then you will have access. In this case, I'm just going to log in with my email and my password. Looks something like this. And now I'm opening up the, the software here. Here you can see that there is a new version which just came out, version 1.90. It's released uh, in, in April. And you can see that it has a, a couple of new features. There's some added navigation errors. There's a list of supported instruments and et cetera, et cetera. I'm just gonna click a new project here. And here you can see a, a number of different possibilities to add new uh, parameters to your project. Up here, I'm just gonna call this one. Events are part of VWR um, project demo, like this. 
And over here, today, I don't want to do particle size analysis. I don't want to do refractometry. I'm not interested in volume, volume measurements, micro volume measurements. So I'm just going to remove that and say, all I want is a tinience at 650, a 550, and 450 nanometers. That, that will do it for me today. I'm going to click Create and go ahead and, and look at that. Now it's uh, setting up my new projects. And um, it looks something like this. Of course, it's a new project, so it's empty. So the way I get started is, um, is in this case, I go to Spectralink. And since I've already connected my device, it will show up here inside the software. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Connect. And in this case, there is a new software update available. I think we will skip that for now, but of course, it is always best practice to install your software updates right away when, whenever there's, there's a new one coming out. For this demo, I would like to go from 400 to 700 nanometers. I'm gonna use a scan speed that is pretty fast and scanner resolution is this, and then I would like to just measure my baseline first. So now what happens, and maybe you can hear this um, in, the, in the webinar here, but the instrumentation now, now Spectrally has taken over the control of the instrumentation and the instrument is performing a baseline scan. It's performing this scan from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. So that's basically covering the visual range of, uh, of light. And as you can see, the, the curve is going back and forth and, and the data is being recorded. Um, what I like about the UV600 PC is that if you compare value for money here, there's a lot here. It, it's a relatively affordable instrument, but as you can see from these scans, it's relatively fast to scan. And um, at the same time, it has a reasonable, reasonable scientific uh, output. So I would say this is a good value for money entry level spectrophotometer. Yes, so now we managed to, to read the, the baseline and I'll see if we can record some data. So I'm just going to take a cubette. And in this case, I'm having a, okay. I'm having a cubette in like this, see if it can record it. And I'm just going to record capture here. Um, for this demo, I put in an empty cuvette, so there was there's air inside the cuvette. However, um, the cuvette is installed. It's in, it's in one of the nano cuvettes, so it has a photonic chip. So we should be able to see resonances from this chip. And as you can see here, around 630 nanometers, there is a peak that is the signal from the from the chip. And and using this software, it's possible to correlate this uh, change in this peak with uh, the, the refractive index and concentrations close to the surface of the photonic uh, chip. So it's a quite quite nice system. There you go. And that's the time it takes to record a full spectrum. Now, I could, of course, also have done a single wavelength measurement. But in this case, I wanted to show you how easy it is to actually record a spectrum if you use something like the UV1600 PC VWR hardware. Um, it's fantastic that this is this is so easy today. So if I go back, now I checked everything is fine. If I go back and I say I would like to create something, I have three choices for, for workflows in here. The first is basic cuvette. Then I have NanoCuvette 1. That's one of our advanced products, um, special cuvettes. Then I have NanoCuvette S. That's another of our advanced cuvettes. And this is for particle size analysis. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and just click basic cuvette. I just want a, a very quick spectrum. As it opens up here, you can see now I can see my, my frame from early and I'm just going to click capture. Now what happens is the data is recorded inside the instrument using the detector inside the instrument, transferred to the, to the motherboard of the machine. The Spectralink directly communicates with the motherboard inside the machine. And based on that, Spectralink is then transferring the data into the cloud where we can now live see how the spectrum is recorded as we go along. And this brings a lot of lot of benefits. One of them being that this this device could be a iPhone, it could be a tablet, it could be a computer. Whatever you prefer to read out on is now very possible to do. Just gonna just go ahead and just wait a little bit until the data has been recorded. There we go. And now I'm gonna click finish. 
now it 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 saves the spectrum in the cloud and it brings up a small summary screen where I can then see a couple of interesting things. I can see um, which data model I used, when was this data created, what was the references, what are the files that was uploaded, et cetera, et cetera. Down here, I can add my additional parameters, solvent, analyte, a sample name. In this thing, I'm just gonna put empty cuvette um, because the cuvette was empty. I can make a small note down here. This is a test for Venta. Part of VWR. Let's see if I can get this right. There we go. And over here, I can see a couple of data. So in this case, I just wanted a very simple readout of attenuants at 650 nanometers. So that would also be referred to often as an OD measurement. You can see that I'm reading out 0 0.19 absorbent units, then I have a readout at 550, so that's green light, at a 0 0.12 absorbent unit, and then I have a readout in the blue part of the spectrum uh, for 50 nanometers, that would be uh, 0 0.1128 uh, absorbent units. And down here I can see the spectrum. If I want to export directly from this window, I can click over here, then I can ask the data to be exported as a CSV file, if that makes sense or I can export it as a PNG and, and import that into my presentation or other kind of software. It's quite a nice, easy way to, to get things done. Um, now I'm gonna click close, and now you can see in the list uh, in the project of the different files, it uh, has now set up a new file here. And now comes the question then, okay, so that's, that's very nice, it works really well. How do I then get this data into something else automatically? So in order to do that, I need to go to the profile in the top right corners. I need to click on profile. Then on the profile, I can choose API key. And, um, and under API key, you can see I have a list of different keys. I'm just gonna go ahead and click new API key. And on new API key, I can choose which projects should this API key give access to. You might be in a situation where you're running a, a, a laboratory where you know you might you might be a CMC for example, and you have multiple customers who are engaging in this, and you want to share one project with a customer, but might not want to share another project which belongs to another customer. So to 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 handle that, it's possible to give access using this API key to specific projects. And it's possible to give, of course, access to all the projects. In this case, we would just like to give access to the VWR Inventor project, demo project. So I'm just going to click there, and then I'm going to give it a, a name. And in this case, since it's the same, I'm just going to use the, the name on the iPad key from my project, and I'm just going to click Generate. Now what happens is that it sets up an access, and I get this long key out here. I can click to the right and copy to the clipboard. If I copy this key into another um, software, if I copy it into the Colab notebooks, it will automatically uh, get the data from Spectralink into my analysis and I can plot it with just one click. If uh, something um, happens or um, yeah, something unexpected or, or perhaps the project is ending, it's always possible to uh, withdraw access on these API keys by simply finding the API key and click on the trash bin symbol inside the menu, which will then delete the API key and now the data is no longer shared. So it's completely up to the user. The user is at all times always in control. One example of how these API keys can be used is if I go back to Spectralink, I mentioned it earlier that we have something called Jupyter Notebooks. It's a very popular tool among our customers. And in here, for example, I can choose a, an, a, an, a collab template here. Um, I used the standard curve earlier in this presentation. I'd like to show you again. So here I'm clicking on, on the collab itself. And in order for me to insert the data, let's see if I can find it. I can barely, I can basically just insert it here where it basically says change this to match your API key. I'm just going to copy in the API key now, like this, and then I can run the data, and now it will be running on my latest data. 
So all I need to do to update all of my quality control on a daily basis, for example, is just set up the API key. And as data comes in through the system, um, I can just click at the top of the collab, and then it will automatically update the graphs, the tables, et cetera, et cetera, that needs to be needs to be done before we can get a we can go home from the lab, right? Fantastic system, and I definitely recommend trying it out. If you feel you need a bit more help, there maybe I might have been a little bit fast in my presentation today. Please reach out to either us or Advanza BWR. We'll be happy to help and help you automize and digitalize your lab flow in your laboratory. So again, the latest advancement in digital spectral processing is really all about the cloud. It's all about using the fantastic computational powers out there. And that's what's driving behind the, 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 the CoLab notebooks, the Jupyter notebooks. And if we look at supported instruments on Spectralink. So Spectralink is currently supporting on the VWR perspective, VWR UV 1600, um, VWR B 1200, if you have that in your laboratory, VWR P6, and VWR P9, and VWR P4. Um, if, the, if you're thinking, um, I have not heard about the VWR, uh, for example, P9, it's the new instrumentation generation from BWR, and it's uh, quite nice. We have it here um, a, in, our, in our lab, and I recommend checking it out. It's, it's a lot of value for money and um, quite nice performance, uh, and definitely something to be looking into. If you have questions about uh, buying a new spectrophotometer, please reach out also to us or to BWR Adventor, and they will be happy to help you, guide you to the best possible decision. I should also mention right now we are onboarding the VWR 6300 instrumentation. I think a lot of you out there will have that in your laboratory and the VWR M4. So a lot of supported UVB spectrophotometers um, from um, um, from Apple. So in conclusion, um, what's in it for you as a customer? Well, first of all, you get reliable, accurate results. Um, you get that using spectral link because it talks directly to the interior of the instrument. That means that all of the digits that is created by this instrument will be transferred to your final results. A lot of the spectrophotometer producers out there don't actually transfer all the information that is available in the instrument when a measurement is done. Using this spectral link, it talks directly with the hardware inside the box and you will get much better results in that way. On top of that, it supports the different kind of new possibilities with particle sizing, refractometry, and microvolume um, measurements, and thereby it really becomes a, a very nice system in the laboratory that can handle a lot of different, different jobs and different tasks. Spectralink works with existing UV spectrophotometers in the lab, and every year we add more instruments. Um, and there's no download of software. It's always an updated online software platform. Um, if you find a bug, um, write to us or, or Eventer. We will we will try and clear it out. And typically, all issues are solved within 70% of all issues are solved within two weeks. Um, so it gives a very time, very fast time to to respond to different needs and and, and get and, and get you moving on. Um, with Spectralink, the amount of knowledge that you need in order to operate such an instrument um, is significantly reduced. There are no expertise needed for operations. And then there's just much less time wasted with data transfer and analysis automation when you're using Jupyter Notebook and, and, and Notebooks, et cetera. So with that, um, I'd like to say thank you. Um, and I believe that Vian will take over on, on any questions that you might have. Yes. Thank you, Emil, and thank you for the questions. I will read out the question and then Emil will try to answer them. The first question is, is, is from Murat. I think it's Murat, which we know. Hi Murat. Um, is Spectralink suitable for pharma industry? Is it complying to the current regulations? Thank you for that question, Murat. And, and the question was, is Spectralink uh, compatible with the pharma, pharma industry? Um, it does not have an FDA compliance uh, as part of the software package. So you cannot use it in a GMP regulated environment. However, we do have pharma companies, but they only use it for research. It's only in the research laboratories. 
um, is only for research, not for diagnostics, not for TMP environment. Okay. I hope that uh, answered your question, Murat. Thank you. The next question is also one of our friends, Igor. Hi, Igor. Um, hi, Mil. Can you manipulate the spectrophotometer directly, not via the computer, in case your computer is in the office and not in the lab? Yeah, exactly. Thank you for that question, Igor. So, so you asked the question if it's possible to control the spectrophotometer directly without a computer. And certainly that is possible. If you're in the lab, you are having Spectralink connected, you can use your smartphone. So you don't actually need to go via computer. Um, you And there's a multiple of different ways where this opens up for a new way of working. So you can also use a tablet if you prefer to do that. So it really gives a lot of options of being, you, you know, controlling the instrument. You might be in a situation, you have a lab running, you have an office, you're going back and forth, doing a day-to-day -day work, and, and you might just have to press a button to, to start a measurement or something. Uh, for example, there's a reaction going and you need to wait five minutes before you start. All of those things is supported out of the box and you can use your smartphone, tablet, or a computer in the office um, to control your instruments. So it's really, really super easy um, to, to do that. I, I hope that answers your question, answer question Igor. Otherwise, you, you can always write a, a, an additional question. Thank you, Igor. Next question is from Sumit, which we also know. Hi, Sumit. Um, how will Spectralink help for microvolume measurements? Can you explain that again? Yes, and um, Spectralink, so the question from Sumit was, how does Spectralink help with microvolume instruments? So Spectralink is one part of the platform today offered by, by CPS Nano Copenhagen Nano Systems as, um, as part of our collaboration with Aventar at BWR. And we have different inserts, different consumables, and I can just show, yeah, you show it. Yeah. One example, I think I put it in here. So if I just open up over here, uh, here you can see a, a consumable that looks like this. So if you insert this consumable into the spectrophotometer, um, then the optical chip that is sitting here uh, allows you to put in with a pipette 0 0.5 or 2 microliter and actually read the signal out in the same manner as if the cuvette was completely filled with liquid. Maybe explain with the cover slip. Yes, in order to do that, you need to put it like this and then there is, you need to use a pipette, you need to, to insert a cover slip. It's quite easy to do. So when a spectrum is generated from the optical chip, Spectralink collects the spectrum and it's analyzed in Spectralworks in one go. And thereby you can do microvolume uh, measurements as easy as you could on a nanodrop system or a MySpec, uh, just using your already existing spectrophotometer. If you're more interested in that, we have a webinar on this, uh, where we show, for example, that especially for high concentrations, this method is actually better than a nanodrop system. Um, and you can find that on our website, you can find it on the Aventa website, or you can find it on YouTube. Yes, and, I the, hope that and the, question. I, the cover slips, do they are they included when you yes. buy the nanocubits? Uh, yes. The cover slips are included in the when you buy the consumables, the nanocubit one. Um, so it's all all you have to do is, is get the package and you're ready to go. I hope that answered your question about how you use the uh, yeah, how, he showed how you use the cuvette to do uh, microvolume measurements. Thank you, Sumit. Good. Next question from Khaled. Hello, Khaled. Can we analyze polymers like collagen or symmetrical? Um, that depends. Um, that question uh, requires, I think, a bit of a longer um, meeting. Um, if you'd like to discuss that further, I, I recommend you reach out to your local events representative, and then we take a meeting together. Um, if you're if you're talking about this from a from a perspective of particles being formed, and is is it possible to kind of kind of get that process characterized? You can use one of our consumables together with Spectralink and characterize that in a spectrophotometer. Yes, Which but there is a number of there is a number of things you um, as a researcher need to be aware about. Be aware of before you apply this method in your laboratory. Um, so I definitely recommend reach out to your local events representative, uh, and then we set up a meeting, and 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 then 
and, and then we can discuss a bit more how to set up a flow in, in your laboratory. Which consumable would you? I, I would recommend using NanoQLS and use the dedicated workflow inspector work for can this you show in, in, in conduction to. Um, because I don't think we have shown the NanoQLS. So if you look at this, uh, the NanoQLS is another one of our cuvettes. So it looks like this. And this is for particle sizing. And what is um, what is unique about it is that it has a, a photonic chip, a photonic crystal, and turning an optical filter. Uh, but also that in order to use it, um, I'm just taking out the nanocute one, you need to put it into instrumentation and then you actually need to turn the cuvette inside your instrument several times in order to get the full picture of the sample and then all of these different spectra are uploaded to the cloud using, for example, spectroling and thereby you can do quant particle size quantification. And this is a new technique. It has been on the market um, about a year now, and it, it's it's quite it's quite um, quite successful, I would say. Um, and, and just mention that in Spectroids, it shows you and guides you. What exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So so if you're using um, when you're using the software Spectro Spectro works, this stuff I mentioned about that you have to turn the cuvette inside the instrument. That that the software will guide you through that exactly when to do what. Um, typically, a customer can buy an cuvettes use it on the order of 20 times a day for more than 11 years before you have the same cost as buying a dedicated particle size analyzer. I hope that answered your question, but as Emil said, please reach out to us and we can uh, take a meeting and answer all your questions and get a better understanding of your needs. I think we have time for one more question before we have three minutes left. Uh, we have one more question from Prelit. Can we use another brand, as, as another UV spectrophotometer other than VWR? Is that possible? Yeah, it's possible. Um, you know, um, we as a company has a very, very strong and close collaboration with VWR as a technical partner for VWR. Uh, but it's actually possible to use other instrumentations as well. Currently, we're supporting close to 50 different models. More models are added every month. So um, the best way to see if your instrument is supported is go to our UV knowledge space. And simply um, and simply go through the list of the supported models. We update it regularly, so you can see which in instruments on our knowledge base we which we support right now. When we talk about SpectralLink, of course, the cubits is another discussion. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't think there's any more questions, and that is perfect because we only have two minutes left. Thank you, Please Emil. Want to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> no, Before thank you time. very much, uh, Emil, for the interesting presentation and demonstration. And thank you. We are, as we are coming also to the end, uh, I also would like to thank the participants and uh, tell them that uh, you can find more information on uh, about the products and the studies also on our website at Avanto uh, site. And uh, if you have still some questions or if you need a follow-up, please mention this in, in the survey and we will contact you in the, within the next uh, week. So thank you all for joining us today and uh, we hope to see you again in future webinars. Thank you very much, Emil and, and Vian, and uh, you all thank have you. a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.